Hello there, this is Dr. A with a um, clinical chem review on liver function. All right, so let's start with the liver. It is the largest internal organ. It plays a critical role in metabolism, digestion, detoxification, and elimination of substances from the body, such as like drugs and stuff. Um, it is unique in its resilience. It has an ability to regenerate cells destroyed by short-term injury or disease. Like there's, a, there's this like turnover of these liver cells. You can even cut off part of the liver and transplant it in another person. Obviously, HLA match and all that kind of stuff, and um, your liver would regrow, and a liver in a patient that's been transplanted would grow to full size. Quite an amazing organ. The liver weighs 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms in unhealthy adults. It is located beneath the diaphragm and protected by the rib cage. Uh, it is kind of more heavily on the right side of your body, it's the right side of the abdomen. It is divided unequally into two lobes. It is extremely vascular and it receives blood from two sources. And that is quite actually unusual because all of your other organs get a blood supply from one source, the arterial supply, and then it's drained by the venous um, system. And so the liver gets a blood supply from the hepatic artery, as expected, and supplies about 25% of the blood that comes in the liver. But then where it is unique is it get a blood supply from the portal vein. So the portal vein is um, linking the small intestines to the liver. So everything that is absorbed by the salt, small intestines enters the portal circulation and goes straight to the liver. Okay, and then the, the liver processes and does, you know, sorts and does all the stuff it needs to do uh, with those um, nutrients and uh, things that have entered the, the liver from the out of portal circulation. It is drained by the hepatic vein. Um, and it also has bile canaliculi, which are little small spaces between the hepatocytes, and they form intrahepatic ducts, and that's where all the excretory products of the cell can drain. So as it detoxifies stuff and like gets rid of stuff, that's that's, a, that's its way to it's this waste discharge, if you will. That's how it gets rid of um, the the unwanted. Um, things in our body and a bile and it will drain into bile to the, the canaliculi and then into the bile duct system. So the liver lobules are the little microscopic units that divide the liver. They look like little stop signs, as you can see here. They're hexagonal in shape, right? And uh, there's a whole bunch of them, so it almost looks like a little beehive. Um, and they are responsible for the way the liver works, for all its metabolic and excretory functions. So um, as you show here, it's a six-sided structure. And at each corner, you have this little trifecta here of a portal venial, a portal arterial, and a bile duct. So um, again, as we just mentioned, the portal venial and uh, arterial are bringing, uh, this really should be hepatic arterial, are bringing this blood supply here into the liver and bringing things to be processed and detoxified and all that. And so the blood will come in here and then flow this way in the direction of the central vein, which then um, will go to eventually to the hepatic vein and, and leave the liver. And so as it flows through, uh, the, the blood supply flows through there, these cells are, that are here in brown, that are, are the hepatocytes, will do the processing and detoxification and all that. And then all the toxic products and waste that need to be removed are going to enter into the bile duct system here and, and drain out through the bile ducts and stuff. Here is another diagram where you see it a little bit better. So again, here is one of these lobules, which is again hexagonal. And then you can see again this little uh, trifecta here that of the the branch of the, hep the hepatic uh, portal vein, the branch of the hepatic artery. And they're coming through. You have a little Kupfer cells here that are de de you know helping clean up too. And then you have your hepatocytes that are doing their job and the waste products into these little bile canaliculi here portrayed in green and enter branches of the bile duct and all that in drain. And then the flow of blood, of course, coming here goes that way toward the central vein and then drains it. 
there are two major cell types in the liver, the hepatocytes, which are the large cells that radiate outward from that central vein. Uh, they're represented here in yellow. Again, they're the ones that actually are responsible for the function of the liver. And then the Kupfer cells, which are macrophages, which are stationed in the liver. They line the sinusoids to act as phagocytes, because that's what macrophages are. And they engulf bacteria, do debris, and toxins to help the liver out. The biochemical functions of the liver, so it has excretory and secretory function. It is the only organ that, it, that can process heme waste. Heme waste comes from the breakdown of red cells, the breakdown of hemoglobin. Um, and bile, it produces bile, it secretes bile. Bile is made up of bile acids or bile salts, bile pigments and cholesterol. The bile salts are what is responsible for the digestion of your fats, for breaking down fats and stuff. All the other things are just waste that need to be removed. The body produces three liters of bile per day and excretes one liter. It leaves through your stool. The bilirubin also is uh, excreted as the principal pigment in bile. That's what makes bile yellowish, um, yellow green actually. It is derived from the breakdown of red cells, um, and so that's what gives it its color. And then as it, it passes through the feces and all that, it's eliminated in feces. Some of it's eliminated in urine, but it is uh, its breakdown is actually responsible for turning your poop brown for the color of your poop and stuff. So um, there are about 200 to 300 milligrams of bilirubin produced per day because you have a constant turnover of red cells part of normal metabolism. Uh, it also, the liver also has a storage function. It can store vitamins such as vitamin A, D, and B12. Um, it can store minerals such as iron and copper, and it can, it's also in the storage site for glycogen to um, help maintain your blood sugar when you're fasting. For uh, the metabolism portion of the liver uh, function, um, so it is involved in carbohydrate synthesis. So it does maintain stable glucose concentration by storing it as glycogen, but then of course by cleaving that glycogen and releasing the glucose when it is needed to bring your blood sugar up. By uh, degrading glycogen when needed then by the body again in fasting states. So that's what it does. So it builds it, it, it makes glycogen and it breaks glycogen down all depending on the needs of the body. Um, it is responsible for lipid synthesis. So the liver breaks down fatty acids to form your triglycerides, phospholipids, or cholesterol. Uh, and it also, of course, does lipoprotein synthesis. So it uh, helps with making LDL and VLDL and all that kind of stuff. It can also convert excess glucose to triglycerides, which is, can then be stored uh, in your fat cells and your adipocytes. Um, protein synthesis is a major function of the liver. It makes albumin, which is uh, more than half of the protein in, or is about half of the protein in your blood. Um, it makes transport proteins, so some of those lipoproteins and all of that, but many others, and it makes all the clotting factors. Um, and the waste product of protein synthesis is ammonia and urea. It also does detoxification and drug metabolism. The liver prevents toxic or harmful substances from reaching systemic circulation by binding them or uh, chemical modifications. There are two pathways to this detoxification and drug metabolism. So uh, phase one uh, uses the cytochrome P450 system uh, and it takes something toxic and makes it less toxic. This occurs through oxidation reduction and hydrolysis reactions. And Antioxidants are needed there, and there are substances that can reduce the damage caused by these free radicals that are ge generated during oxidation and stuff. Um, the phase two is of drug metabolism is conjugation. So it, that's the addition of a chemical group such as a cysteine or glycine or sulfur, and it creates a less harm, harmful form that is water soluble and therefore can be excreted, obviously here excreted in bile. A little bit on bilirubin metabolism since it is quite important. So bilirubin is a useless and toxic breakdown product of hemoglobin. It is generated in large quantities by the body. Uh, dead and damaged red blood cells are delivered by phagocytic cells to the liver. The iron is recycled and stored in the liver and used by the bone marrow to make more red cells. The globin chains, are, uh, which are made of protein, are catabolized or they're broken down into components. The amino acids can be reused or gotten rid of. Uh, heme is not recyclable and so it has to be eliminated and um, 
high amounts of unconjugated bilirubin can lead to cell damage. So basically, if you have a big breakdown of a lot of heme, then what's going to happen due to like hemolysis, massive hemolysis or something like that, then what's going to happen is that you will have a lot of unconjugated bilirubin showing up to the liver and the liver is going to have to try to process it and it may get a little bit backed up basically and that can cause a lot of cell damage. The liver uh, also synthesizes all the proteins necessary for the iron transport as you know part of red cell metabolism and stuff like that. But uh, within the macrophages, heme is first converted into free bilirubin and then it's released into the plasma. It binds to albumin. Albumin carries it to the liver. Then bilirubin is stripped of the albumin by the hepatocytes. So it says, give, give me the bilirubin here. And then it's conjugated to glucuronic acid, which makes it water, water soluble. Before that, it's lipid soluble, which is, by the way, why it has to be transported by a protein because that then makes it water soluble. And this conjugated bilirubin is converted to urobilinogen by bacteria in feces and is mainly excreted in feces. And again, this conversion of uh, to that urobilinogen and all that by the bacteria, this action of the bacteria does give uh, on the breakdown products of bilirubin does give poop the its color characteristic color of being brown. And that is it for your liver function review.